Notion has a ton of features, so much so that it can feel incredibly overwhelming. And on top of that, Notion has been dropping features left and right recently. So how do you know which ones are worth using? To help you out today, I am sharing the Notion features that I am personally obsessed with right now. Some of them are old classics and some of them are brand new drops, but all of them are things that make my day-to-day -day workflows significantly easier. So let's jump right into the first feature. Our first feature actually has to do with the brand new database look that just rolled out with Notion. I'm not sure if you've noticed it or not yet. Some people may not have it still, but I'm pretty sure everybody's got it by now. There is a big interface update with databases specifically. And there are some nice little features about that. I know it's kind of had mixed reviews because some people have been confused about where to find different settings. Everything is still there. You can still do everything you could before with databases. It is a little bit different. But one thing I'm absolutely loving about it is that you do have the option to now close all of the different settings that you have for your databases at the top. So if I hit this little minimize button, all the settings go away and even the button for a brand new page goes away too. And this is super nice because in some places where I have databases set up like this in kind of tight little spaces, I can actually minimize that and hide it. It's not going to pop up. It's not going to bother me. And on top of that, if I have other tabs, I can actually see those tabs because sometimes they get cut off with all these different settings showing. Like if I expand it back out, you can see my secondary tab got uh, kind of cut off. Um, and so now if I've minimized that back, I could see both, which is so great. So now I have the option to pop open those settings if I want to, or close them if I want to. It just makes things a lot cleaner in my opinion. And you can kind of keep that closed, especially in places like this, where you don't want that showing because it's going to kind of like mess up the aesthetic of what's going on. So whether you are a fan of the updated interface for databases or not, I think that is a really big win for Notion in terms of aesthetic and just overall functionality of databases. My second feature isn't necessarily a new feature, although it is newer. It is having pinned tabs at the top of your Notion desktop app. So if you are working in the desktop app, this is a great feature. I highly recommend using it. And I love pinning all of the pages that I go to very frequently because it makes it very easy for me to navigate between those pages. And something that they recently kind of tweaked and updated with this specific feature is that when you are in a page, so right now I'm in my business page right here, if I open my branding page, it's actually going to open a new tab and it's going to keep the tab that I pinned open all of the time which is so fantastic because a lot of the times if I'm working in my daily planning page, for example, I come down here and you know I'm working on a piece of content or I'm working on a to-do, like this one specifically was to film this video and I will open up the video in a new tab. It's so much easier because it does keep my daily planning page open for me and then the video is in a new tab and I can kind of flip back and forth if I need to. So Love that little feature with the pin tabs. If you're not using pin tabs, this is a really great reason to go ahead and set those up. If you want to pin a tab in the desktop app, all you need to do is have a full open tab right here. You're gonna right click on that tab and then go ahead and pin it. And then there we go. Now it is pinned to our tabs at the top. Another feature that I am loving is the brand new feed view, which is now available in databases. If you haven't already seen this, I highly recommend checking it out because it is very unique in terms of what it actually shows when you're in a database view. So I have been using it a lot for meetings. So with my team meetings, if I come to my meeting archive, if we pop over here, we can see actually what is inside the meeting itself, which is so cool because this is like the first database view that we have where we get a peek inside the page and we know what's actually going on. So for me, if I'm looking for information from a previous meeting, what I can easily do is just scroll through the list of all of the meetings that I've had. I can see even the discussion points at the top here to remember what it was that we talked about during the team meeting. 
And then I can actually pop that open or see more right here and just take a look at that meaning right from this view, which makes things so much easier. I am still looking for ways to continue to integrate this into my already existing build, but I will say some ideas that I've had are things like journaling. I love it for my team meetings here like this. I also think it would be really cool for announcements. If you have a team that you're wanting to make sure they have seen announcements for, there's actually this little feature at the bottom that says who has seen that page. So it actually tells you if your team does look at the page. So that is pretty cool as well. But if you have been using the feed view for any cool new ideas, let me know below in the comments because I am always looking for new ways to use this. Okay, this feature is maybe not quite a feature, but it is an update that recently came out that I am absolutely loving, and that is the new look of callouts. So as you can see here, the callouts now have little rounded corners which I think just looks really nice. I'm a fan of all the rounding that is happening in Notion. I don't know if you've noticed that recently, but things like their little check boxes, those have got round corners. These are now rounded corners. The little tabs that you have in your databases are now kind of rounded too. I really think it's like taking away the sharpness of the edges that were there which I just think looks nicer. So I'm really a fan of that and it's been just pleasing for me to look at. So maybe not a new feature, but it has been something that I have been loving and just wanna give Notion a little pat on the back for that one. For this next one, we're gonna get a little bit nerdy and we're actually gonna take a look at formulas because Notion just added a brand new function to their formulas list. The function is count, which actually allows you to count things that you have in a roll up, for example. I mean, you can count many more things than that, but I like to use this specifically for my today's agenda here that tells me what is going on. I have the count of how many tasks I have to accomplish today, all of my overdue tasks and things like that. I also do that for my posts. So the posts that I need to make for this specific day, this is counted as well. And so before you could still do this, but it was two steps. There was like a filter function and then a length function that would do that. And so I actually have that showing so you can see what the difference is. So before we had to do the little filter here to find the specific tasks that we wanted to count and then use the length function at the end to actually total what those tasks were. And so if this is your first time seeing this formula and you're like, whoa, this is crazy, I highly recommend you go check out my widget video that actually goes through how you can create these formulas for yourself. So this is a formula I have shown before. I walk you through how to create this. Highly recommend that video first. And if you want to deep dive even further into formulas and really understand why you are creating what you are writing in your code, I highly recommend checking out my masterclass, The Formula Foundations, that teaches you how to create formulas in Notion. Even if you don't have coding experience, we get you through that part too. Check out that masterclass. I will leave the link in the description below for you. Now what we can do is we can actually take out the filter here and just replace it with count and then remove the length at the end. So not really a huge change in the overall formula because I'm still putting in what it is that I am looking for but I am reducing the amount of functions that I need to one because count is automatically filtering and counting for me at the same time, which just makes life a little bit easier when I'm going to write code like this. And it's a little bit cleaner on the back end for Notion too. I absolutely love that they added this in because it means that they're paying attention to what people are using the formulas for and taking a look at what they can make easier for us as we are going to write formulas and code these in. So thank you Notion for that little uh, nice update here that is making my life much easier. Now I want to quickly jump over to Notion Calendar for this new feature that they recently added, which is the ability to actually change the status of something that you have in a Notion database from Notion Calendar, which is pretty darn cool in my opinion. So I have my content database as well as my task list synced to my Notion calendar, which means as I assign the days and the times to when I want things to be going out, either for my content or I want to be doing specific tasks, 
they actually show up in my calendar here. For example, I am filming this video right now. I can actually change the status from here to be in progress because I'm working on it. And as you can see, this little icon that's right next to it actually changes. So now it's got the little timer, meaning you're working on it. Before it just had like this empty circle, which means it wasn't finished. And then as you can see for some of the content that I've already published here, it is checked, meaning that it is done. So that's how you can kind of see what is going on with the status of your items in your databases from Notion Calendar itself. And I just think that's super cool because this is kind of taking it one step closer to being a little bit more like Google Tasks. So if you use Google Tasks to time block on your calendar, this can help you. This is kind of gonna replace that a little bit for you. And if you're curious how I got my tasks on here, I actually talk about that in my video all about Notion Calendar itself and how I'm using it. So I do recommend checking that out. I know that Notion is working hard on integrating databases a little bit better into Notion Calendar itself. And this is just step one on that journey and I'm loving where they're taking it. Okay, we are heading back into Notion to talk a little bit about buttons. I love buttons in my Notion workspace. I think they make things so much easier, especially when you set them up with all of the different automations that are available. And something that a little bit more recently was added to buttons is the ability to add formulas to our buttons. And that has changed the game, I feel like, when it comes to buttons themselves. So I wanna take you to my projects database just to take a look at what I mean by this. So one that I love to do this with is with my projects because this actually allows me to pull information from my projects page here and add it to my tasks since I have a new add action item button. So if we take a look at the settings for this, if I click in here, you can see that I am adding a task to my tasks database here as a biz task specifically. And then what you can do is you can actually add in formulas to all of these different properties. So if I choose to add it any property that's here, you can always come and change it to a custom formula, which is going to allow you to have a little bit more wiggle room with what it is that you're putting into your properties when you're adding an item to your databases. In this case, I am wanting to make sure that the task that gets added is connected to my projects page here, which is what's happening with this page specifically. And then I also want to double check the goal that is linked to the project and I want that to go to my task as well. So with that, I have a custom little formula that looks at this page and pulls in the my goals property from the projects database right here. And so now when I add in a task to my task list, if I press this button, a new biz task comes up. And then I also see that my goal was automatically linked for me. Before I was actually putting in all of my tasks and then I was going through and linking the goal that I had related to my project manually to all of my tasks. And so with the addition of the formulas, to the buttons in this way, you can actually pull in so much more information and remove that friction and extra clicking that you have to do to get everything interconnected. And so I absolutely love that. It is kind of like my little hack when it comes to buttons and I'm always looking to see what I can connect automatically when I am creating things with them. So highly, highly recommend that. Now, while I am here in my projects page, I also want to point out one other feature that I'm really liking, and that is the layouts, specifically the side panel. I love the layouts and the ability for you to customize what you can see from your pages like this so that you can pin um, specific properties, you can make the progress bar bigger if you want to because you kind of singled that one out specifically. So all of this is super nice, but to me, the best part of the layouts is the side panel because I can actually hide things that I don't necessarily wanna be seeing all the time in the side panel and not even worry about them. So for example, with my projects database, I've actually hidden my tasks relation in the side panel for this one because Inside the page itself, I have all of my tasks showing. And so I don't necessarily need to be seeing them again with the relation here. And I don't even really want to see the relation itself at all because I've got the tasks showing in the page here. 
So I put that guy in the side panel. I don't have to worry about it. I can just kind of close it and keep it out of sight, out of mind. And another example of this is actually with my content database. So if I come down here into our video that we're filming right now, we'll use that one as an example. I do the same thing. And this is actually with my information display property. This is what's connecting my today's agenda and tomorrow's agenda to my content so that in my daily planning page here, I can actually see what posts I need to make for that specific day. So this is automatically happening for me in the background. Every time I use a template for my content, it's going to connect these for me so I don't have to worry about it. And I just want to stick that guy in the side panel because I don't want to be seeing that when I'm creating my content. It's just kind of a distraction and a property that is not super important. And I love just being able to close that and not deal with it at all. <laughs> so if you're not using your side panel to kind of hide those properties that you don't need to be seeing, I highly recommend doing that. And if you're not quite sure how to get started with the customizing your layouts in your database pages like this, be sure to check out my video all about database layouts. It will help you walk through how to get started with that. Now, this feature is an oldie, but a goodie. I have used this more frequently now than I ever have. And I don't know why I didn't kind of discover it a little bit earlier, but it is using default templates for your database. Now, I don't always use this. So for example, with my task list, I have lots of different templates that I have for my tasks because I have lots of different categories and things that I might want to be doing with my tasks specifically. So there is no default template for this guy. I actually don't bother with that. I just make sure that I apply the template that I want when I am creating that task or I use buttons to help me apply those templates and make it a little bit easier on me. But for databases that are a little bit more set in stone, I am using the same template for every single thing that I add into that database. Default templates are really great, and you honestly don't even need to have anything in the template itself. For example, my affiliate links, every time I add in a new affiliate link, I go ahead and make sure the default is set to this little new affiliate link template. And when I add it in, literally all it is doing is giving this an icon, which seems a little silly, but that's another click that I don't have to do. And I really like the aesthetic of having my icons on my pages like this. So again, if we take a look, there is nothing on the inside. The template is completely empty. It is just applying that specific icon. So it's kind of a little hack. If you want to make sure your pages all have icons and they look nice, you can go ahead and apply default templates with the icon already set. And that's all you need to do. And every time you add a new page, it'll be there waiting for you. Now, of course, this can also be more complex if you want it to, if you have a database that has a default template that is full and has a lot of information in it, that's totally okay. It does not have to be something as simple as adding an icon like that. But either way, applying those default templates is going to save you a lot of time because it's removing that click for you. You're not having to add that in. It is automatically happening in the background. If you have any favorite features that make your life that much easier in Notion, be sure to drop them in the comments below so that we can keep the inspiration rolling. And if you found a new feature in this video that you're excited to go start using, be sure to give this video a thumbs up so that I know. In our next video, I am sharing all the different ways that you can create reminders in Notion so that you never miss important deadlines. Be sure to subscribe so that you don't miss it. And in the meantime, you can learn all about recurring tasks and how to set them up in Notion in this video next. I will see you guys in the next one.